Hi, well, this is Dr. Ruscio. I'm here with Nathan, who's had really great results, and I almost don't even want to say too much and, and uh, let you kind of tell your story because it's, it's a great story. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you were suffering with, what you were told by other doctors, and then some of the results that you saw, and I'll, I'll chime in here and there. Okay, well, I've been a, a veg healthy vegetarian for 40 plus years. And about seven years ago, all of a sudden, I was having trouble just with gurgling stomach, a lot of bloating, a lot of belching, and then at night starting to experience acid reflux in the middle of the night. Uh, I went to my general practitioner, uh, explained what was happening, and the first thing he did is he prescribed uh, putting me on Prilosec. And uh, basically sleeping elevated, kind of looking for trigger foods, that type of thing. I found that the Prilosec really didn't help me at all, so I, I stopped taking that. Sleeping elevated helped a little bit. Uh, about three years ago, just continued to go back to the general practitioner each year, he finally sent me off to a gastroenterologist. Gastro That's a tough one. <laughs> and that gastroenterologist basically put me on a heavier dose of Prilosec. And what happened then is I broke out in a rash all over my body. And at that point he said, well, obviously you can't handle that. So he put me on a pepsin uh, drug and that was, helped a little bit, I thought. After a while, that wasn't really working either. So I stopped taking that. Um, and I just basically was trying to look for trigger foods, that type of thing. About a year ago, uh, my condition worsened to the point where uh, I'd broken out with uh, a rash. Uh, I'd gone to two different dermatologists uh, the first dermatologist gave me a salve and said, oh, that'll go away. The second dermatologist biopsied the rash. The rash is in my scalp, on my chest, my back, on my ankles. And it was really uh, miserable, real itchy. And he sent uh, a sample off the lab, it came back that it was a, it's called lichen probus, I believe. And the dermatologist said, I'm going to give you this salve, which kind of desensitizes the itching. But for the most part, we have no idea how to cure it. And it's something you may live with the rest of your life. So I, I accepted that. But at that time also, I was really having a tough time with uh, loose bottles to the point where you know, you'd leave home and work, you'd kind of figure if you had to use the bathroom someplace, where might that be? Mm -hmm. uh, and it just got worse and worse. Um, I watched a, a series that time called Interconnected. Uh, and in that series, they interviewed uh, Dr. Ruscio and talked about his book. And I was really impressed with what I heard in that series. So I bought the book and within two days, read through that book completely. Put myself on the food map or five map, five map yeah. diet and that helped about 30%. And then I got an appointment with Dr. Ruscio, met with him, and then he basically felt that my problem was that the doctors were prescribing medications to limit acid production, where in fact what I really needed was more acid in my system. So at that point, he um, put me on a, a hydrochloric acid pills, and almost immediately, uh, all of my digestive issues went away. Um, he had mentioned too that maybe as a plus that the uh, acid would actually help with my rashes, and sure enough, it did. Uh, within about two weeks, I started noticing that the rashes were going away. Within about two to three months, they were pretty much gone. So that really helped, and uh, the, the acid treatment has just been miraculous for me. I want to make sure we don't forget to include this. You were saying that when you forgot to take your hydrochloric acid supplement, you noticed a pretty immediate reaction? Let's say you go to somebody's house, and you're having dinner, and then you forgot to take your pills with you. Uh, or just forget to take it. I, I noticed immediately that uh, I, bloating and uh, gas, and those types of issues. So I'm, I'm very confident that the HCL is, is really helping me with my digestive issues. And that's a clear indicator, obviously, that, that it is helping you, of course. One of the things that I'm hoping that we'll get to in time is a little bit more resiliency. So you can deviate. And what I'm hoping will happen is right now, deviate one meal, you notice a change. Six months from now, you deviate one week, you notice a change. 
a year from now you deviate three weeks, you notice a change. So I'm hoping that your your latency will become much more prolonged, or I guess you know, however you want to kind of label that there. But um, that's another thing just to kind of keep in mind that where you are right now, only being a couple months in, is likely at the same place you'll be six months, a year, a year and a half. Um, just kind of as a note of encouragement, because it's great on the one hand that you're noticing this quick feedback. I'm also hoping that we'll get to a point where you can forget your pills and not have to really worry about it. And in addition to the acid, I'm kind of curious to have you share with people, we, we use hydrochloric acid supplementation, and this is something that I talk about in Healthy Good Healthy You, which can be helpful, it's not helpful, like we talked about a moment ago, it's not helpful for everyone, and some circles on the internet kind of inculcate everyone into thinking that everyone must be on acid. And there's factors that we can look for, and certainly being 65 or over increases the likelihood that acid may be helpful. And the challenging thing is, is that reflux can indicate either not enough acid in some cases or too much acid in others. And that's, that's a real kind of quandary, which is, well, how do we know? And, and really the, the best way to navigate through that is to do a cautious trial. And in your case, almost instantaneous improvement. So that tells you the acid is, is the right maneuver. But um, we also use probiotics and some uh, gut soothing nutrients, our, our gut rebuild nutrient powder, and the vegetarian low FODMAP. And I believe you had been on the low FODMAP prior. Yes. So that wasn't that wasn't a change from when you came in. But there was the acid, there was the probiotics, and the gut rebuild nutrients. Now it seems like the acid led to the most improvement. But what about the, the probiotics? Because, so here's an interesting bit of context. When you came in today, you said, I was 100% last time we spoke, and now I'm still doing great. I'm maybe 95, which is still great. Um, but you had gone from the probiotics every day to, I think, every three days. Correct. And come off the gut rebuild nutrients powder, which is what we want to do. We want to figure out the minimal effective dose, but sometimes to figure out the minimal effective dose, you take not enough of a dose, and some symptoms kind of start coming back a little bit. So anything else to share there with these other supports and things that you've noticed in terms of do the probiotics seem to be aiding in any unique way or any, any feeling on those? Well, the whole package really helped in the beginning. And uh, just recently, I noticed that kind of gave very, very uh, minimum symptoms coming back, and that's what we discussed. So I will be, I would definitely go back and, and try more probiotics again. And, and had you also, I believe you had said, sorry, I'm trying to remember all the, all the chart notes here. Um, had you also backed off your dose of the acid at the same time? No, the acid was... So that's been so the acid's been constant, yeah. and the probiotics have decreased to once every three days from once every day, and the gut rebuild nutrient powder is now gone. So, th you know, I, I think patients, they, they, they have more power in their, in their hands than they realize sometimes if we can just try to isolate these variables. So now all we're going to do is go back on the full program, wait a few weeks until symptoms seem to be back to that 100%, and then try to reduce these kind of one at a time, and that makes it a little easier to kind of tease out that cause and effect. So that's that's kind of the synopsis, but we really see here, if you can be strategic when you use hydrochloric acid, and, and for the clinicians, you really want to see a notable symptomatic improvement, and that's what we should be looking for. You can have great results. And then another awesome example of the gut-skin connection, and this is something we were talking about a moment ago, we're just scratching the surface on the gut-skin connection, and there are sometimes skin lesions of various sorts that we don't even have a name for that you may see improve when you improve someone's gut, or that have no known treatment that you may see improve. So I don't wanna oversell that case, but certainly if you're having skin issues, one area to consider is your gut, and there's the old naturopathic saying that the skin is a reflection of the gut. And so in this case, an added bonus that we weren't even expecting to see, right? Anything you want to kind of leave people with in close? I've uh, been very happy with uh, the treatment plan. It's changed my life. So awesome! Uh, you know, obviously, I'm thrilled that you're doing so well. And for those watching this, don't underestimate the power of some simple things like a hydrochloric acid supplement you could buy online. It may actually be more effective than a PPI from a gastroenterologist. Again, always check up with your gastroenterologist, it's not to say don't follow the recommendations, but don't be shy about getting a second opinion because in your case, boy, <laughs> issue reactions and minimal changes in your symptoms 
with one approach, and if we go over to a different camp of thought, it turns out that was a much better fit for you. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and I'm glad you're feeling so much better. Thank you.